G'day there. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to test a RAMPS board, a uh, 1.4 version board, with the RAMPS test code provided on the RecRap wiki page for the RAMPS board. So what I've done, I've got my power supply here hooked up. I still haven't got around to fixing that fan wire. Works okay sitting there. Um, I have it running through this multimeter here to display the amps. It's set to the 10, 10 amp range, so it'll be tens of amps, ones of amps, and milliamps down there. I also have my little oscilloscope hooked up so we can do some checks with that. And I have one motor with a plug that fits on the outputs on the board fairly easily. So, I'll take my motor off to begin with and let's fire up the power. And I can see some flashing lights, a red and a green down there on the board, and they're looking pretty healthy. And I can also see that I'm drawing about 100 milliamps of current. Uh, nothing's hooked up, so it takes 100 milliamps just to run. So that's good to see. Now, first thing I'll check while I've got the scope here is I will just see what's going on on these. And I can indeed see, even though I'm in the wrong time frame, that there is a square wave on that extruder heater. And there is another square wave. I'll be a slightly sloppy one. I think that's just the way I'm holding my probe on the other pin. Uh, I did find some interesting results. I think this is because I don't have a thermosistor in place. Um, that's only showing 2 volts square wave on my extruder nozzle. And it's showing a similar thing on the other pin. So that's not so good, but it might be because I don't have a um, thermosistor in there telling it how hot to make the nozzle, so it's just making it cool and not heating it much at all. So next, let's test our motor out. I have, and I have actually placed a variety of different jumper pins in place on the different outputs here to demonstrate different step rates. So this one will be at one quarter steps. And you can see there that the current has gone up. And before I go any further, I'm going to dial that into the lowest that it will run out comfortably. And that's not like I'm going much lower. It's making some funny noises. But I can turn it down quite a lot. I don't know if you can see that, it's quite jerky at that speed. So I'm going to turn it back up to about 200 milliamps because that's pretty nice. So, we know that one works. And that is what one eighth steps look like. Uh, quarter steps, sorry. Uh, this next one is on full sixteenth steps. And as you can see, that's turning very slowly, and this also uses the least amount of current. I've already tuned this one in. That runs quite low. I can, of course, turn that current up by adjusting the correct potentiometer. And now my current is going up. If I turn that too far and use too much more current than what I really need, I'm needlessly heating my board. And be really careful with metal screwdrivers, because you don't want to short something out. So I'll turn that one back down. And we can move around. And in this way you can go over your whole board and check all your pins. That one's on half steps, so it goes a lot faster and does more steps in between actually changing direction. Also uses a lot more current. I don't think I could get this one down much lower. Oh yeah, it will go down.
There we go, that's not too bad. It will go quite low with no load up. There we go, we've stalled. I'll turn it back up a bit. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there is actually a um, change in noise when I touch my screwdriver to that potentiometer. One more, what have we got? Two left to test. Let's, start. Let's go for this one. It's going one way okay, and this one is on... Uh, it's not on half steps, this is on one eighth steps. This is the second slowest it can go, second most accurate. And that also appears to be working. And I'll just dial that current down again for later on. much better. Now if I plug all my motors in at once I won't pull too much current. Now finally I have for you what happens with a damage board. See that motor is not turning. It's bouncing around like crazy. And the typical camera won't focus. Let's come back again. There we go. I can actually just turn that with my finger. Just jumping and bouncing and stuff. Can't pick a direction. So let's have a quick look at what's going on there with the oscilloscope. I will need to change my time frame a bit. So, on the A side of the motor, on the A winding, oh, how about I zoom out so you guys can see. So on my A winding, I'll get my probe on there, I have a nice square wave. But on my B winding, not so pretty. It's just noise. It's not dropping down the voltage at all, and that is the same on the other half of the B winding. This probe just slipped then. So it went really should look like that. Okay, so that is actually a faulty Polalulu board. And this one's actually a legitimate, genuine name brand Polalulu board. And we had two of those that I think came out of the packet not working like that, both on the B channel. We have also destroyed two through misadventure. Um, these ones here, these little blue ones, we got really cheap on eBay. And the camera's not going to focus again. But yeah, these little blue ones we got really, really cheap on eBay. They're like four or five dollars each. And all I had to do was solder on these um, pins. So a good bit of soldering practice there too. And I like them a lot more. Actually, they seem to be more reliable. The only downside is the potentiometer is wired up in reverse. So. Normally on a Polalulu board you would turn anti-clockwise to turn your amps down and clockwise to turn your amps up. On these blue boards you turn anti-clockwise to turn your amps up and clockwise to turn them down. Which you almost never see on anything but, you know, for five dollars you can't complain too much. Um, I did also experiment with seeing for those of you that don't have an oscilloscope, if you can see any of those waveforms just with a plain old digital multimeter and you may have a bit of luck with an analog one you can see that there's a um, you know a waveform of some sort there but and you can see the steady 12 volts on one side of your heat bed ones and you can see fluctuation on the other side of your heat bed but it's not quite accurate and this is a 600 readings per second multimeter so your cheap ones are only going to do this worse. And on AC, similar story. You can see there's something there, but it's not giving you accurate readings. But if you're wondering if your heat bed's live or something, then that might be just enough to give you a yay or a nay that it's working.
Okay, so that's one ramp sport, all tested and working. So, where did I get the code from? Well, that's easy, it's on the Rep Rap Wiki. On the ramps 1.4 page, under pre-flight check, just here, you scroll down, it says you may want to use this code, and the word code is a link, which will take you from the ramps 1.4 page, which is this page, You go down, you find your pre-flight check stuff. There, just above the drawing. You know, click the button for code. Brings up this page. You copy and paste all your code. Into your Arduino. Which I have over here somewhere. There. And I've already done that. The code's there. Compile it to Arduino. And it's really simple. There's not much to it pretty much just defines all the pins and goes through and toggles them all high and low in the sort of milliseconds seconds to milliseconds kind of ranges and you could mess with those timings if you wanted to so there you go that's how you test the ramp sport and my one that I soldered up myself is working fine thanks for watching